Bloodborne the Old Hunters is a £16 DLC that I have bought but can't play, and if that doesn't sound like the opening to a furious swear-laden video by someone whose username ends in swag420, I don't know what does. I mean, technically I can play the Old Hunters. I've killed Vicar Amelia and I've grabbed the eye of the blood drunk Hunter, giving me access to the Hunter's nightmare, but trying to make any significant progress at this point in time is kind of a fool's errand. And it's all thanks to this guy. This is my Hunter, who, for reasons best left unexplored for the time being, is called Sex Cop. As you can see, Sex Cop is level 71. Why so low? Well, for one thing, I'm not the best at Bloodborne. I got stuck trying to beat Shades of Yharnam about six months ago, and then The Witcher 3 came out and I sort of just stopped playing. But even though I'm still a long way off finishing Bloodborne, seeing the old Hunter's DLC get an essential on Eurogamer convinced me it was probably worth picking up. Who knows, maybe it was just what I needed to jumpstart my love affair with Bloodborne. <laughs> My opening foray into the DLC was embarrassing, humiliating even. Despite a couple of hours of trying, I've been unable to get past the modest opening segment and have basically had to give up on playing the old hunters until I reach a significantly higher level, which, you could say, is a bit of a pants situation given it set me back nearly 20 quid. And sure, I could launch into a diatribe about it being unforgiving for a separate financial investment. I could ask why From Software didn't put in a system that auto-generates a sufficiently powerful character for you to use in the DLC if you don't already have one, the same way The Witcher 3 does for the Hearts of Stone DLC. But then doing that would be to ignore everything Bloodborne is actually about. <laughs> See, while prohibitively difficult, The Old Hunters has actually proved to be both instructive and incredibly useful because it got me back into the swing of things. Or, as I suppose would be more apt, the rhythm of things. <laughs> I said this before, but Bloodborne is a very exacting game. Even if you're plowing through an area you've covered 50 times before, you still need to be on your toes. Getting complacent can still prove fatal. Bloodborne demands you study it. You have to tap into each area's particular ebb and flow, working that rhythm into your playstyle and filling in the gaps with attacks of your own. In other words, Bloodborne makes you react to it as you play, not the other way around. If you bluster in trying to do your own thing without considering what it is you're facing, you're going to misstep and you're going to suffer for it. And it teaches you this very early on. When I first started playing Bloodborne, I struggled to even reach the Cleric Beast, let alone beat it, and I started to get frustrated because the game doesn't let you level up your character in the Hunter's Dream until that first boss has died by your hand. It didn't seem fair to ask me to beat this boss without letting me improve my character because I know how intrinsic farming up souls or blood echoes is to From Software's games. It wasn't until later I realised it wasn't letting me level up my character yet as a way to force me to develop and adapt my playstyle rather than relying on inflated stats. Even having played Souls titles in the past, I still had a lot to learn and, in short, Bloodborne wasn't going to let me loose with those improved stats until I learned to speak the language. And while I was initially frustrated by my time with the old hunters, getting slaughtered by this one particular dude with his flaming jerk hammer brought those lessons back to me. I decided to take another swing at the Forbidden Woods as a break to see whether I was, as suspected, too low level to attempt the DLC for the time being, or whether I'd simply forgotten how to Bloodborne. The answer, as it turned out, was both. I had a much easier time dropping back into a level appropriate area, but I was still making unforced errors as a result of not having played in so long. I put my nose back to the grindstone and happily found the old skills coming back relatively swiftly. Amusingly enough, I actually beat the Shades of Yharnam on my first try, post hiatus. At the time of recording, I'm now in Bergenworth having a go at Ron the Vacuous Spider, unsuccessfully. Now, if you know your Bloodborne well, you'll know that's not even very far to go after beating Shades of Yharnam, but after a six month hiatus, frankly, it feels monumental. I can tell I'm going to beat Rom soon as well, I'm just figuring it out for the time being, but another few tries and I know I'll crack it. 
In other words, I'm back in the sweet spot with Bloodborne and having a separate area I can access but can't hope to beat has proved to be a really motivating factor. The Old Hunters is a £16 DLC that I have bought but can't play, but in a weird way, I really don't mind that. It's a £16 DLC that's tempting me and goading me, but most importantly, it's waiting for me. It's a £16 DLC that I'm very soon going to be ready for, and then I'm going to stomp it to death. <laughs> Pages. I'm looking. Oh, this is bad. This is twisty yeah, and turny. Is and twisty and turny. Oh, 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 shit! <laughs> What's with the teleporting thing? That's, that's what he does. 